Okay, so we wanted to take, uh, I, I guess a little bit, to talk about a whole bunch of random shit. And, uh, I don't know. Let's let's just start and get it out of the way. Uh, Welcome to Wraith got discontinued, uh, unlimited. Everybody's losing their shit because I, I don't understand it because I, I don't think there's even trouble finding the product. And everyone's like, what are we going to do? And it's See? like, buy the singles. Buy the singles. It's not an issue. I don't understand. Everyone thinks there's an issue. There, there's four issues. And I think there's two issues in the whole game. One, technically. And that's C and C. You can give an argument for each strike. Each. Everything else I think is fine. I think, like I said, I think thirty five dollars for a, a, a <clears throat> generic majestic that you have to buy three of, and it goes into whatever deck ever, is not that big of a barrier to entry. Like people say this, and then these are the same people that will go spend four hundred dollars on four four lands and magic. Like yeah. maybe they're not the same people, but like I feel like everyone has the same argument, and like games have these barriers. It does happen. Like you know what I mean. Like there's there's cards that cost money it's too expensive for as early as it is yeah. see i'm not even but that upset about how expensive it is honestly i think that the way the game plays uh yo soren hey what's up uh i think the way the game plays i think the game is so close that like yes there are benefits I, I, to run in those big cards I but I think that you, a good player can go to a tournament with all common gear, all starter weapons, and probably run the tournament, or at least have a shot. Now, um, there there are equipments that I, I completely disagree about. Like, the new, uh, well, no, there's a good common replacement for the creepers. Um, the, the common, the common's <clears throat> good. It, it, it's just one time. Yeah. You'll go get into one of your attack actions instead of being able to do creeper stuff. Yeah. Um, but what I mean is, in in games, creepers only activate once to twice. Also, you yeah. know what I mean. So like they're they're common or uh, not common but similar. Comparable. Yeah. Um, but what I meant by issue is that the first two sets had a really poor majestic distribution rate. And that's why they're so high. If they reprint those cards in any set with the new Majestic distribution rate, they become $50, which I think is fair for a CNC. Um, 40, 40, 50 bucks, I think, for CNCs. And they won't even be that when it gets printed in whatever comes out next, because everything gets overprinted. Ever and it, it won't be that. <clears throat> See, I don't know, because... Now that we're going to see these cards fall into the supplemental sets, I think we could very well, if the game grows at the same rate, um, I think that we could see those cards stay where they are, and that's still a healthy range. It's fine. Uh, and, but, like, it's for three. the next set, if we see E-Strike and CNC and Tome of Fendel and Art of War come out in the set. There's no way. Um, Way too many reprints. I think we're gonna see more reprints in this set than I don't than you realize because I think I that's don't. where we're gonna see reprints is in these supplemental sets. We don't need reprints. <clears throat> that's what I'm trying to say. You could still buy all of these boxes. They're still widely available. The, like WTR is not hard to find. There's like a million dollar boxes on sale. Like everyone's freaking out, acting like you can't find these cards. These cards are still very available right now. We don't need reprints. The only reason we need reprints of those couple cards is the majestic distribution of those sets. There was only two per box. There are now seven per box. On average, six to seven now. There was only two per box in Welcome to Wraith and Arcane. So that's why they're so expensive is because there wasn't seven of them. The S slot that, w that when you look at them now, some of those S's become rares and some of those S's become Majestics. They took up yeah. a chunk of the Majestic distribution there where you weren't always getting a Majestic level card. You, you know what I mean? So like I said, the next time it gets printed, whenever it is, it'll be readily available in pretty much almost one per box. Like, not for sure, but like... the the. 
Not, not definitely not one for one. Yeah. But you, you know what I mean. There's a two for Kate. Is that fair? Mm, I don't in even a know. Set? In a normal set, yes, but the way the supplemental I'd, sets are made, there's a chance it's not in the supplemental set and it's in the next draftable set. That uh, again, yeah. But I do think we're getting it. I, like, I think we're getting it for yeah. sure. But I think. Like, if you go back to my predictions from the previous time, <laughs> this just plays into what I was saying, mm-hmm. that we will probably see yeah. <laughs> two of the four I originally said of either Art of War, Tome, uh, E-Strike, or uh, CMC. I think CMC for sure has to come I out, think because CMC. it's the only one that really... I think they know CNC. Is needed enough to where I think that you'll see that. I'd even give you E-Strike, but I don't think we go past that. Like... If, if maybe not this set, maybe if, if they next feel time. like they're they need to make these reprints with these uh, out of print things, I think it's <clears throat> the cap, CNC, and E Strike, and nothing else. I don't think they need it because again, like I said, I don't think we're I don't think we're at the point we need reprints. There's a chance they don't. You know what I mean? Legendaries are different because the drop rate was so low. Mm-hmm. So like I get those being in there. Um. Do you think all the legendaries are reprints? Or do you think... No, I think we're going to get one reprint Me too. and two unique. Me too. And I think one of the unique is going to be a legendary adult shield. I, 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 um, and then... It makes sense. I don't know what we'll see. Maybe we'll see some kind of... Uh, maybe she'll get a, a legendary equipment for herself. Yeah, maybe, maybe she'll get a weapon. Special. One should because uh, she'll, yeah. she'll, yeah, she'll, she'll be a rounded she'll be a rounded character. She'll now. need her own weapon at that point, so you might as well give her a legendary weapon. I actually agree with you. Or maybe not agree with you, but agree with what we were talking about before. That I do think it's gonna be all the adult heroes from Crucible. Oh yeah, I think that that's And they're gonna all gonna get sure. cards. Because they said a card for every hero. I think they're gonna grow those heroes up, give them cards on top of Yeah. You know what I mean? The Generic class cards. Um, and I'm assuming we're going to get generics here. Oh, yeah, I, I yeah, think yeah. we're going to... Like you have to give it a little bit. Maybe I, not. Maybe. This, is, this might be out of left field, but I feel like we might <coughs> get generics in the supplementary sets and not get them very often in the, uh, the draftable sets because of the talent system and how they're going to take up the, the main slots. So I... And again, like I've said before, I think if you overprint good generics, the game gets uh, muddled. So you can't always print generics because you're always going to print a good generic, and you can't do that every set. Yeah. I, I think I think that puts a timer on the game. Like personally, like I think eventually it just it either becomes you have to ban cards to keep it from being. What's the word I'm looking for when everything looks the same in a meta? Oh yeah, when you just have like a. Like a uh, ambiguous, clone, yeah. Yeah, like, yeah. Everything's I mean, the same twenty core cards, and then you're right. just adding a couple cards to right. change it to to a specific faction or class or whatnot. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, <clears throat> um, so I, I mean, I think I, I just think that even if they do reprint these cards, I don't think it's going to be that monumental or anything, because there's forty eight majestics in this set, which means it's if a lot. Let's say that you get six. That's six is the the low average. Mm-hmm. So, if you're getting six majestics per box, it might be more. In this you time. could you could get two cases and not get a duplicate at that point. Yeah, sure. Um, not a single duplicate majestic out of two cases. I if you got like, the, the perfect two cases. I feel like it, the drop rate might be higher with with there being more. Like maybe we'll get like eight per box. Well, the last supplemental because it's not draftable, so it doesn't hurt. It. You know what I mean? It does. Yeah. It doesn't matter if they give you more majestics or less majestics because it doesn't hurt a format. So there's a chance that maybe they up the drop rate in general too, because you're getting less yeah. cards. The MSRP went up, which none of that should matter because cardboard's cardboard. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? But um, also gives them a reason to put a little more juice in the box, right? Like, you know. But yeah. I mean, it, and they could. By or other TCG be, uh, standards, or it could be that you get two guaranteed yeah. foils per box sure. of the majestic slot instead of one or something there, right. because you usually get six plus a foil. But 
That doesn't count towards your sure. slot, so I'm not going to count it. So you could get 24 completely unique majestic for a case if you got six and you're right and that's you're right two cases worth two yeah. cases would two be cases, the yeah. exact amount yeah. um the last set the last supplemental only had 36 we're increasing the majestic right. by 12 and the last set was the first set to go away from the special rares to the majestic right. system so i mean if they stay true to that same majestic good. system we could be it'll be good we could be good there like yeah <clears throat> and they could they could reprint all four of them if they felt it was necessary by that right. point. If, but I don't. If the market just spikes for there. some reason just because of the out of print stuff, which but it, is but unrealistic it, because you you're going to see it on the shelf. You could still find it. Like even the people that are fire selling it online and stuff are only charging like three fifty a case. It's like it's not. It hasn't even hit like the hundred bucks a box thing on any of this stuff. It's very readily available and. Again, I see people like, "What are we gonna do? How are we gonna get these cards?" It's like, dude, they're not—they're not gone. No, and they're super common. Yeah. I, it, anyways, I, that's all I really wanted to kind of touch on was like, I think people There's are like, like, just every time they hear this out of print thing, they like, the sky's falling, and it's like, yeah. like the things had to go out of print eventually, and it doesn't change the fact that the boxes sitting at your store are still sitting at your store, uh-huh. like. The people that play at your store, if they're not an active online seller, the people at your store already have what they have. And not every store has people going in there and being like, I want all your boxes are out of print. You know what I mean? Not every store has that. Plus, it's Uh, stupid to do when you go into a store and they have 80 cases still. Like, there's, it's realistic that people are going to have a high inventory. They probably haven't even shipped it all out of the warehouse yet. No, they haven't even gotten it all to distributors yet. They said there's another load going there. Yeah. We don't know how much is sitting in the warehouse. Right. There could be a million units. Right. They could just be overprinting this so that they're done forever and never yep. run out. That's true, too. <laughs> like, they could have it set up that way. I don't you think don't that's know. it, though. No, I, I, mean, I that's, think this is all that would be real a stupid ploy to too, keep but. cards worth money because they were going uh, into a yeah, very I mean, negative You direction. were looking at Majestics out of a set that had two Majestics mm-hmm. per box right. that were worth single digits. Right. That shouldn't happen for a usable Majestic. No. Um, yeah. All right, and then do you want right. to talk about this NFT as yeah, well? Yeah, so uh, the next thing ro- uh, we wanted to get into is Spellfire is... what? It, that's the old Magic competitor, right? Yes, that was the original Magic competitor. It was made by TRS. The copier, uh, kind of. Well, they were... It was different. They owned D&D at the time. TRS was the company that owned the D&D Oh, franchise. really? Did not know that. So, a lot of the That card wasn't always games, WotC. No, WotC no. didn't buy it until 3rd hmm. edition. Okay. That's why there's a 3.5, because WotC needed to make oh. money off of the book, so they had to reprint them with okay. their own logo on it. So, that's where the 3.5 Okay, from. cool. So, I mean, that's, when, that's when WotC took over, I believe. Uh, I believe 3 came out, it was TRS, 3.5 right. came out, it was WotC, and that was just their way of getting their stamp on the box. Okay. Um, so, at the time, TRS came out with a card game to try to compete with Magic, and they used a lot of D&D characters. So, uh, like I think they said some of the characters are actually based on original TRS employees created D and D characters. That's and what Legends is in Magic. It uh, was <laughs> our WotC employees D and D characters. That's why there's so many Legends. They're all they're all character sheets from D and D games that people nice. play and stuff like that. Um, you know, fun fact that's off topic. But yeah. so so that's what a lot of this stuff was. And there's even a Forgotten Realms uh, set that was released in the original version in I believe ninety four. They released it. Uh, it's a Forgotten Realms based set based on all the story arcs that were current at the time for that that realm. So, I mean, they had a lot of different stuff in them when they were out originally. They had some bugs in their game. Uh, they had a major competitor that had already established themselves in a non-existent market. Um, and I think that that just kind of doomed sure. them. Like kind of like we had the same issue with Rage that we played, which we absolutely loved. 
that died to similar reasons. They had a couple bad sets, their games weren't compatible set to set, and they eventually... I, you really know, the more I think about it, I don't know if I love Rage. I like Rage. I, I, I enjoy I, Rage. I, I, I don't think I love it. I, I don't think I love it. Yeah. Um, I, the, the, more, the more I get, the more it simmers with me, it, it, like the polish kind, not the polish of the game, but like the shine of the system, and just, I start thinking about it, and like, I don't know, it's fun, yeah. I, don't, I don't, I don't think I'm in love with it, is all I'm saying, if it can't, if, if they remastered it tomorrow, I'd buy a bunch of it, but, yeah. like, don't get me wrong, but like, I don't think I love it, I like it. Uh, well, I, I enjoyed it quite a bit, as as the dead games go, and, sure, and it died sure. a, and it a similar too. way. So, um, so I'm excited to see this, and they they're re-releasing the game, uh, and they're doing it with NFTs, which I did not know what they were up till last night. Um, I don't do a whole lot of alternative investing. Um, Doge is about as far into the alternative investing area that i've probably gone i love that. all the investments uh so <laughs> I well i mean them. i've played card games since 96 right. that's, so all you ca- that's an alt investment technically but i've never thought of it as such right um up until very recently <clears throat> i never thought about the gaming as that i always just tried to make sure that it sustained itself by you know selling old to get new um and unfortunately that was a bad system in trading card games but when i was four it worked um <clears throat> but anyway that spellfire is coming back they're going to have a digital and a physical game coming out and right now they're introducing nfts that can be purchased for in game um and different rarities have different levels or different amount of uh investors so like a common they're going to be a hundred people purchasing their a hundredth share of a common. So you're going to own 1% of that common. Uh, and <laughs> once, uh, once it fills, you're going to get 90% of revenue, uh, generated from it. Are you sure about that? Profit. So what it says on the page, like we're read, we're going to reread through it before I a hundred percent buy in, but I am almost 100% sure I'm buying well, it. Well, again, I'm with you. I'm going to buy two, uh, even if I strictly have to chalk it up for, for the channel. Like, well, I, I mean, I'm buying I don't, the game. I don't, well. right. I don't like NFTs. I don't like the idea of NFTs. I don't believe in it. I They they freak me out. I think they're stupid. Um, but I want to be able to play the game with you. I want to, uh, for what we're doing, I'm in... Uh, do I think I? So do we get all the cards on the digital platform for our one twenty seven, or do we just get access to the game and then we have to buy cards? Because that's a big question too. Because if that one twenty seven just lets me download the software, <clears throat> and then it's like Magic Online, which are the original NFTs, by the way, because that's exactly what. <laughs> right well, no, because you're not buying unique. They are, yours is unique. You own it, and you can sell it. It's it, it's it's a non fungible token. When you own a card, you own that card. It's in your account as that card, and I can sell it for real money to someone else, and then he owns that card, right? No, it's not. It's not I know it's not on a blockchain. I know it's not on a blockchain, but because like, there's no limit to it, it's not non fungible because of that reason. Because there's no limit. That, yes, that's the difference. So non fungible is I don't makes know what it unique. Means. It's, uh, it means non-exchangeable. So, okay. like, okay. if the best way that I heard it, I had a guy that was wearing a red jacket or an orange jacket. I think. Oh, I he believe was, him instantly. Yeah, he's wearing an orange, orange jacket. jacket. Yeah, yeah. yeah got You're got wearing an orange. Yeah, he's wearing right. an orange that's what I mean. Like, All right, Goss twins. Let's hear it. Let's hear so, it. So, uh, <laughs> so he's like, this brand has this orange jacket, and you're buying this orange jacket, but you don't have ownership to. The unique first that jacket that jacket's interchangeable you purchase the jacket because you like the picture you see in the magazine they send you one of a billion jackets right um so the non-fungible means that it can't be exchanged so you're buying a right. unique product that's completely unique and coded to be such so 
right there here. are 100 pieces of this card and in that digital software there is something that makes it unique to you and yeah. to your one copy but so i can't that's, sell it to you and exchange then it's it? mine right but, but yeah you just you said it's not exchange it no it's non-interchangeable. Right, but so if I give if, it to you, we interchange it. <clears throat> no, no, no. You're thinking of exchange, not interchange. Interchanging ownership. So, like, this is a blue token. This is a blue token. Yeah, they are two blue tokens. So these are interchangeable. You'd need a blue token. These are both blue tokens. They're the exact same token. Yes. Either one of them is the exact same thing. Understand. If one of these was hand-painted... And then the rest of these are all printed on cardboard. As that one, generic. Okay. okay. So gotcha, this one gotcha. hand painted is non fungible. It is the original hand painted copy of this version gotcha. of this art. Okay. No, that was, so this is the well, Mona Lisa. This well is done. the original artwork. Yep. Okay. Now this is a carbon copy that's been printed ten billion times of this same right. token. Yeah. But this is the most unique because this is the original one. This is mine. We believe uh, that. If you believe in that. Yeah. <laughs> but that's kind of like, do we, you believe in the money that you have in your bank account? Do you it's, believe, do you in, believe in your Dogecoin? Do you believe in your shares of Apple? Like, no, it's, right. it's all the same thing. It's all like, the same thing. If you believe, believe in it, then it's believe real. Believe in the $20 bill in your yeah, pocket. It's like the, it's like right. the, the fourth hole. Yeah. you got to believe it. Yeah. It's like the entrance to Hogwarts. If you don't believe it, it's not there. So, so, <laughs> so, so to get to it... You're going to buy Family into guy. a common, correct? <laughs> so I'm going to buy into a common. All right. Uh, and then I'm going to start playing the game once once the... I, I assume it's a beta that they're going to probably right. go I, out to. I'm going to buy into something, too. Um, probably a common. Yeah. Right. The, the, it's very expensive to go much higher. I'm not doing it. I can't epic. afford a rare. I definitely... You'd have to put a lien on your house for the epic. I yeah, feel like dude, I don't. Twelve thousand bucks was that what it was? One hundred twenty-five thousand dollars to own one, one fifth, fifth share. One fifth. Yeah. Woo. I think I can only afford one hundredth right now. Holy but, shit! But uh, then you can play for it. You can uh, even become partners with them and become a promoter and do stuff like that. And uh, you can earn currency that can be right. used to purchase more NFTs. So I'll look into it too, and that what again, if, if there is an online game and stuff, we can produce through that, which would be cool. And we'll both get to play it as a thing. And may, maybe it'll be something cool. And yeah, I'm cool. hoping we'll just get $125 worth of entertainment out of the game, and then anything extra we get out of it will just be ice. If it doesn't cost any more money, I think that's easy. Yeah. Well, I think it, that's I'm easy. sure it'll be one of those, like, you like, can play for free if you want, but if you want to skip to this part and be competitive, you can drop this much money, and well, we're I both don't. competitive. And no, I won't. Do. I won't. Again, this is falling under uh, so a good segue <laughs> into the back, uh, Kickstarters I backed. Yeah. That I don't. I can't afford another collectible game. You know what I mean? So like, I got them to open on the channel, play on the channel. Sell, sell sell the singles um, and keep a box or two closed. Uh, and if they do something cool, if not, and we're still doing this in five years, we can bust out some random box of something that was a thing at one point, like MetaZoo. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Like this. Again, I didn't open a yeah. box of MetaZoo yet because I have no desire to really... I don't have a desire about it. But if it dies... <laughs> like, <laughs> well, plus, we did get our two sample decks we did. that we got hooked up with. We, from... we get to finally answer the question if the game's a game. Because, like, yeah. seriously, have you, like, who talks about I mean, I've talked to Nathan about it. But how many people do you know that played the game? None. Like, All right. Uh, Andrew and Nathan. And they, Andy, neither Andrew, of them yeah. have even talked to me about it. Yeah, They've I talked only to talked Nathan to you about, about it. And Andrew about uh, it. But I... I like, I had zero interest in the game. I didn't even, like, I'm just going to check it out to see. But, uh, yeah, I don't have high hopes. I haven't heard great things. But I like, you know, I like games. Like, yeah, I just like too. sitting Same. down and playing games. So most of the time, Why we do this? I can enjoy <laughs> myself for what it is. Sometimes games are just too bad to enjoy. So we'll see. We'll see if that's the case. But 
I mean, we we both got a deck. Uh, we got hooked up from uh, Critical, Critical Games. Games. Uh, they they oh, gave us they the hooked us up with this too. They hooked us up with, this they up with some shout out, to, to huge to shout out. Enjoy as well. So we're gonna bust some of that out as well. I think that's gonna be our first game that we're gonna move into.